Hello designers, this is Angie from Ravener's Design Academy. Welcome back if you're subscribed and welcome here if you're new. I bet most of you have heard of SketchUp's Match Photo feature, but very few actually use it. Match Photo is a great tool if you want to model a certain space, but you don't have the basic measurements and dimensions of the said space. There is a whole section on SketchUp's Help Center introducing Match Photo and what you can use it for, but unfortunately it doesn't really explain how to apply it to an interior. There are a few definitions for the names of tools and guys and what they're used for, and I will be explaining those as we progress in this video. There are also some guidelines when it comes down to choosing or taking a photo that would work with match photo. Like, for example, having a photo with a lot of right angles or take a photo with a 45 degree angle from a corner. There's also using photos that haven't been cropped, warped, or distorted for best results. I'll link this Help Center article in the description below the video so you can take a look at it too. Also, if you would like to see me some more SketchUp tutorials, leave a comment below. And don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. It really does help us. And now, how about we start photo matching, shall we? Starting with the lay of the land, this is the image that I am using with SketchUp's Match Photo tool to create an interior. It's a picture of an apartment renovation by Need Design that I found on homeador.com which is also been linked below this video. The house is gorgeous, you should check it out. I think it matches the criteria of selecting a match photo image. There are quite a few horizontal and vertical lines and there are a few right angles thrown into the mix. It's not taken at a 45 degree angle from a corner, but it's taken from a straight ahead point of view with a far rectangular wall in the end, so that should work just fine. You can see here the ceiling is angular with a minimal cornice area and that should help me a lot when setting the guide for a match photo. Even the column has a simple crown and that's an added benefit. Now match photo uses something called axis bars that you'll see once I launch SketchUp and start using match photo. So I'll open this photo in Photoshop and start highlighting the angles I'm going to align these axis bars with for a better result. Some may call it cheating, I'm saying it's a hack. Once the photo is open in Photoshop, I'll start by zooming in on the image and aligning guides with a couple of the more obscure angles on the wall or corners that are hidden behind things. After that, I'll choose a bright contrasting color and the line tool and draw straight lines using the guides by pressing shift while clicking to lock the angle of the line and then dragging the mouse to draw the guidelines I'm using for the axis bars. It's a mouthful, just take a look at what I'm doing. The right side wall has an interesting angle that I can use when adjusting my axis bars, so I'll create a guideline there too using the meeting points of the two previous guidelines I just drew. This time while drawing the line, I won't be pressing shift because I don't want to lock my yellow line to a specific angle. But I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work or whatever that is and, and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I wanted or whatever, drive home. In the end, when I clear my guides, this is the result we're looking at. I have an outlined anchor corner that will be clear to see and easy to follow when adjusting the axis bars and perspective to start modeling. Told you it's a hack. I'll now save the file and launch SketchUp because we're ready to start. Now inside the realm of SketchUp, start with a clean file. Of course you're at the very least familiar with the axis which are the green, red, and blue lines that form the X, Y, and Z axis of the 3D universe. Match Photo uses these axes to help determine the perspective of the image you're using, thus helping you in creating a pretty great replica of that space in SketchUp. It also uses a few other tools that's not that smart. But now, before I import the Match Photo image, I need to rotate the red and green axis to the opposite side because I want the green axis to be pointing towards me when I click the front-facing camera. Thank you. 
To start the match photo tool, I just go to camera, match new photo. I'll select the photo I just edited in Photoshop and click open. This is how the setup will look like when you first import an image. The access bars might be slightly different, but it's all the same. The image itself will be locked as long as you are in the match photo guide tab. And this over here is the axis origin. It can be moved around by clicking and dragging your mouse so your SketchUp knows where you are in the universe. I'll take the axis origin and position it right in the bottom corner where I created the guidelines. This will position my Z or blue axis. So this is where we go up. Now we'll start positioning the X and Y or the blue and green axis bars by saying this is left and this is right, which is basically this is what it's saying. I'll start aligning the green axis bars with my drawn on guidelines by clicking and dragging the handles on each end of the axis bar. If this process disrupts the orientation of the axis origin, don't worry, once you're done and it, if you've done it correctly, the axis origin will be back in place. If not, you'll need, you'll need to realign your red and green axis. The main reason I flipped my axis in SketchUp earlier is because the image I chose for the match photo has an inward if the photo had an outward corner, then I'd have left the axis as they were, which is facing away from me. It all depends on the image you choose and where your corner anchor will be, or your anchor corner will be. This is what a successful place placement of axis origin and axis bars should look like. If you turn on the grid in the match photo menu, you'll see the vanishing point of the perspective. We need to fix that, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Another option in match photo window is choosing the type of corner you're trying to trace. There is inside, above, and outside. Inside is like the type I'm using right now. Above is like this example picture. And outside is kinda like this. Then we have cleans, and that really depends on your photo and how you decide to approach it. Would it work well with a combo of red and green axis? A blue and red or green and blue you decide depending on your image you start to get a hang of this once you start practicing with different images for now red and green works fine for me because my reference photo has an inside corner with a lot of lines paralleled with and per perpendicular to the camera's point of view now last but not least the spacing this basically has to do with the green green grid spacing you see on the image since it's a square grid the number you set here will represent the length and width of each square. This will in turn affect the scale of your model in the end, so try to think of an approximate estimate of width, length, or height you'll be setting it to. Looking at the current setting of 100 millimeters looks good to me. We'll know once we measure the height. Once you've clicked done in the match photo window, you'll be able to move around your model freely with your usual field of view and choose your own different perspectives. To go back to the match photo view, just click the tab on the upper right corner of your workspace. This is your modeling view. Now to actually start doing something with the image we so carefully imported and set up, I'll start by grabbing my line tool and press shift on my keyboard to lock to the red axis and create a straight line to the left. If I remove my finger from my shift key, my line will roam freely without being stuck to any axis and that could cause modeling errors because you can't really tell if it's going left, right, up, down, it just looks that way. Now, if I leave the match photo view, I'll be able to see that I just drew a perfect rectangle. Yay! If I click on the match photo tab, you'll be able to see the rectangle I just drew through the photo. If you ever wish to hide your drawing so you can take a better look at the photo, the match photo window has an option to do so. Going back to continue what we started, you'll see that there is a cove here that needs to be traced. So I'll just use the common sense tool and try to guess what it looks like. From there, it's all about a little bit of guessing and following axes to make sure you're on the right track. 
It's not an exact science. Now off to the window, we have one here on the right and another much smaller one on this wall we're facing. This time we don't use the line tool, we opt for the rectangle tool instead. As soon as you click the tool, click shift to be able to control the tool better and have it snap where you want it. Now the second tool is different, a lot of guesswork will go into this one, so it's the common sense tool again. There we go, now we have a basic outline of the space we, may, we want to model. One of the downsides of match photo modeling is that this could happen though. Yep, my model is stretched in a very unrealistic manner and I can't fix... I can fix this with the scale tool, but look where that gets me. So I'll finish my model first and show you how to fix this problem in the end. But just know that this problem showed up because we did not fix the horizon line. So you always need to fix your horizon line along with everything else. This was kind of like an on purpose kind of mistake. Now that we have our ceiling's main shape in place, I'll check first if this is not a perspective problem using the zoom tool. Nope, apparently not. The details I have left are easily modeled by referencing the image, so there is no need to trace anymore since I already have the basic shape of everything. I have the original image right here saved on my hard drive. I can use it as a reference for things that I'll model and other things that I can find on 3D Element websites. So let's fix our model. I'll start by grouping all the geometry together. Then I'll start measuring the height first to make sure it's realistic enough. Yep, it's around 3.2 meters high and that would work for now. So our whole problem is with a horizontally stretched model. To fix that, I'll just use the scale tool and unstretch the grouped geometry to something like 0.25 of its original scale. Then I'll go in and see how the measurements of the space look like. All good. After going over the measurements and seeing if I can work with them, I hereby declare this process as successful. Minus the horizon line. I'll speed through the rest of the process, it's just basic modeling from here on. And to conclude, Match Photo works really well for interiors. I can see a lot of practical uses for it when it comes to taking clear images on site and then replicating them on SketchUp to preview something for a client. Mm, or are you just basically taking pictures off the internet and doing what I'm doing? I mean, we can only see, th see that single nook from a whole house in the image and we still manage to replicate it. So why not redesign it too? Let me know what other uses you can see for this tool in Interior Archivist. 
or interior arch arch interior architectural visualization it's a mouthful in the comments below and make sure you stick around till the end of this video to see the final results wink wink Now I had to skip over the parts where I add in materials and components or the video would have been over an hour long and you've seen me do that before so there's nothing new there so without any further ado here you can see the original image of the living area and dining table nice now here is what the model eventually turned out like I didn't create the plaster over brick detail over there next to the TV because I'm saving it for another tutorial coming in the near future wink wink again and finally here is the rendered after I'd say it's pretty similar to the original image now, don't you think so? Now that's it for today's detailed video on Match Photo. So if you have any requests or suggestions, you can of course drop them in the comments below and I will, re and I will reply back as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And it really does help, guys. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and always remember to let your creativity lead the way. Now, till next time.